Hello, everyone. Welcome to the channel. Today, we have a very special guest here with us. His name is Valentine. Valentine is a very strong and very powerful Scrum Master who is very strong in his basics and a very good idea about safe Scrum basics. And today, we are going to help him prepare for the interview for his upcoming job as a safe Scrum Master. And any company that hires Valentine will be lucky to have him because of his knowledge base and his grip on the Scrum process and his relationship building strength. So now, so with that out of the way, we will help Valentine. We'll prepare for the interview and, uh, you know, let's get it started. So Valentine, welcome to the channel. Thank you. Thank you, Ishatan. All right. So Valentine, so as always, the first question is always tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Valentine? Thank you so much for that question. Uh, my name is Valentine. I am a certified Scrum Master with an overall experience of over 10 years. And I've been working as a school master for five to six years today. So I started my career in the waterfall space and then I transitioned into agile. I have experience with various forms of applications, including cloud-based applications integrated with agile, scrum, and combine, and also integrated with their web form and their Jenkins using tools like Jira, Confluence, and DevOps. I have worked with different form of applications, different form of projects, including migration projects, uh, building CI and CD pipelines and deploying them using Kubernetes and Dockers, and also adding new functionalities to existing applications. I started my joining as a support specialist. Then I worked my way up to being a school master with Canadian Tire. There, I actually was helping the company in their transition from the waterfall into agile. Then I also assisted the company in building an application to help the company make their business decision. So from there, I was internally promoted. Then I later moved on to my next role, a school master for the safe environment. And that was uh, the Royal Bank of Canada, where I worked there for three years integration in collaboration with a release train engineer. Then in my recent position, I'm working for a safe environment. I'm working with two teams. One is at the performing stage. The other one is at the norming stage. In my daily, basically in my daily activities, I help the company in the facilitation of all scrum ceremonies, starting from scrum, spring planning meeting, daily stand off, spring review, Spring retrospective, backlog refinement, a spring demo, assist the PO to, to make sure that the backlog is healthy, and also to also make sure that all the stories are being refined. I also manage dependency among multiple teams and uh, also resolve, resolve conflict among teams. I also use the, the score metrics in the monitor and tracking down of the progress of my team. So I know this role that you are, you are looking for is a difficult one to fill, but with my knowledge, my experience, my expertise, and my communication skill, I will be able, I'm looking forward to helping your company in their transition from the waterfall into agile. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you. That is amazing. That's amazing. All right, so that's a very powerful answer, Valentine, and uh, super impressive, very amazing. Thank you so much for that answer. Now, Valentine, uh, you know, I'm really impressed with your experience and what you have done so far in your career and, you know, with your background, data migration projects and different projects that you work with. So <clears throat> now talk to me about the most difficult project and the most difficult team that you have worked with so far. Actually, the uh, you know actually working in the this as a school master as a whole and studying human beings is actually a challenging thing and also helping the company in the transition from the waterfall to agile is actually another very challenging something that uh, it really needs to 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 understand have good experience about it so this uh, the most challenging uh, project that I worked for was uh, my the project I, I was helping the team, a safe environment in their transition from the waterfall into agile. So they were not actually used to agile. They were actually resisting. And I actually faced a lot of challenges first to 
convince them as human beings are difficult to change. So I actually, because of my experience, I was able to lead them through coaching, mentoring, teaching, uh, actually in every stage of the, the ceremony, every stage of our meetings, I continually teach them, training them, using every opportunity to teach them, to train them about agile processes and agile practices. And then that is how I was able to help them transit from the waterfall to agile. And managing a big team is actually a challenging thing, but I was able to get it happen. Thank you. Awesome. How many teams have you managed at one time? Uh, two teams. Okay. Currently, you are managing two teams. Yes. And what are those teams working on? Actually, one team is working on the user interface, the UI, and the other one is working on the database phase right now. Okay. How many people in each team? So one team is composed of uh, the scrum master, the PO, and then the multiple testers, multiple QAs. So a team is already a team is made up of uh, eight, six to eight people per team. So and the other team is actually almost the same. So you have the scrum master, the PO, and the development team members, the testers, and the and the, the QAs. Great. So what has been like? the learning that you had from your last retrospective. What did you learn from your last retrospective? Actually, from my last retrospective, I actually learned a lot. Um, one of the things that I really learned about it was that we were not actually doing our story estimation properly. And because of that, some of the springs that we committed, we, com we, we committed to were not actually able to complete those springs. And what the lesson that really I really learned from it is that I am going to now implement a way that uh, we are actually going to be focusing on clarification of the user stories to 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 the to development team such that they will properly understand each story specifically, and they will be able to commit just the amount of stories that they will be able to complete by the end of the spring. So I've also learned how they to be able to properly to properly lead transparency among my team. I discovered that because some of new members that joined the team and they were not actually very transparent with other members. And because of that, it was a little bit slowing the team down. So henceforth, we'll be able to implement that for our next upcoming springs. Great, awesome. <clears throat> now talk to me. How have you dealt with a difficult scrum master in the past? Thank you so much, Shatan, for that question. Uh, I, the way I have deal with the difficult scrum master is when I, I was working in this in my environment where my organization where I work with multiple teams. So I actually collaborate with scrum masters of the other teams. So. This was when we had uh, a dependency that was actually machine depending on the story that was on the, for the scrum master of a different team. So what is I actually before the, we, we, we connect that story to, to our team, to our Jira board, I actually get hold of that scrum master and it was a really bit difficult to get a hold of him. And since the, even then, he was still resist, like not really giving me the time, the opening up. So it was a little bit difficult to get that in touch and on time. So I actually need to, what I did is that I bring the story to the spring meeting. I bring that down to the spring meeting, the, the spring planning meeting where I open it up to the, to the team and actually communicate it out and we were able to figure it out. So I, it was a little bit challenge because I was unable to handle it with the Scrum Master one-on-one, -on -one. but when I brought it to the Spring Planning Meeting, I was able to deal with it and it was, we were able to track the story. Okay, <clears throat> have you ever worked in a safe environment before? Yes, uh, my previous uh, organization was a safe environment and my current organization is a safe environment. Okay, so how? Explain to me the structure of how your teams are organized and who do you report to? 
actually actually I uh, in a safe environment you know safe is a big organization where multiple teams are working together so the events come masters of different teams actually working together now in one solution so the scrum master you have the scrum master you have the po and then you have the the release strength engineer which is like coordinating all the teams together so we 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 actually meet together for a scrum of scrum meeting and when there is any issue the release strength engineer takes care of that because it's like the, the chief scrum scrum master Okay, great. Uh, talk to me about SAFE. Talk to me about the PI planning in SAFE. All right. Thank you so much for that beautiful question. Uh, the PI planning in SAFE is the heart of SAFE. So uh, what do I mean by it's heart of SAFE? It's, it's a two-day event where the whole agile, the whole SAFE team, like the whole team starting from the top to the bottom, all the P, the product owners, all the scrum masters, the whole safety meets together for a two-day event. That is called the PI planning meeting. And this meeting, it gives an invite opportunity for the whole team to get like those who are working remotely and those who are working in, 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 in on site. They have the opportunity to meet together and have a collaboration, get to know each other detailly. And during this meeting, the business, the business owners, the business, the business leaders, they come and then they, they start the meeting, start by them giving an overview of what they, they need to do, like what the customer want on the business context. So after they speak, they communicate to the team. Is therefore is that is followed by the project, the product management, who comes and then he explains the ten features what the team actually will be working on for the duration of the of the PI. Then after that, the system architect comes and talks about the technology that will be implemented for the execution of the of the PI. Then for, that is followed by the is followed by the release train engineer who comes now and then he talks about the planning, how the the the, the iterations of the two weeks iteration is going to go like the planning. So when that is done, the team goes into the team goes into the breakout rooms. To, to with with the item to in order to figure out what they are going to work on so they will pick items from the program backlog and this have a communication so when they go into the breakout rooms each scrum master the product owner and the development team they have a their own table separate so imagining around the, in a big in a big hall so each table will have the PO, the scrum master, the development team. So they have that discussion. And then at the end of that discussion, the scrum master of that team, each team will come up with a plan. They will come up with a plan of what they are going, the probable items that they have to be working on for the P, for the duration of the PI. So they will present it to the whole the main group. The business owners will give their feedback. And then when they give their feedback, they, they that will be that will give the end of day one of the PI planning meeting. So on day two, they will start, day two will start by the team going back to their breakout rooms. So they will come, they will have a revisit that plan, revisit that feedback that came from the business leaders. So when they revisit, revisit it, they will actually have a final plan of what they are going to work on. Then they will the school master will present it to the main group. So when they present it, then they will actually have the final planning. And then for that will follow by the, the, the dependency. They will have time for to, to discuss about dependencies and the, how they are going to manage the dependencies and mitigation of risks and so on. Whether each team is having a dependency with the other team, 
and how they are going to manage that and so on. So when that is figured out, then they will do the voting. The voting will be done and the, uh, a vote of three and above is a good plan and it will be validated. And then if the vote is three, two and below, it will not be good and it has to be revisited. So when all the voting is done, then they will actually do a retrospective of the positive votes that were conducted. So the vote, the retrospective will be for the two day event that happened, how it went, what went where, what did not go where, and actually what they can learn from it. So that's the summary of the PI planning meeting. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> Fantastic. Now, talk to me, what does a two week look like in life of Valentine L. Scrum Master? Walk me through your two weeks. Uh, uh, Shatin, can, can you refrain, repeat the question a little bit, please? Yeah. So walk me through the two weeks of Valentine. What does a two week look like in the Valentine Scrum Master's life? Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, uh, for the two weeks, actually, I begin my two weeks by actually checking. I check my mails to make sure that the beginning of the of the week, like start from 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 the beginning that the week is starting today. I'm gonna start checking with my mails and making sure that I'm up to date with everything. Like I see if there is any updates of everything on my emails. So after checking that then I will actually have to be the first person as a school master to be the first person. I always be the first on to start so that I will wait for my team to, to come. As they come, I welcome them so they come on. So from there, we actually welcome them and then I will introduce that today, our day, first day of our, our, our meeting. So we will move from there and then we actually do during the each day we do our spring plan every our, our daily stand up so but by, by day the spring begins with the spring planning meeting so be, even before the spring planning meeting we already have our backlog refinement meeting that i met with the PO and then we actually prepare everything make sure that our backlog is healthy and then we begin the day then it follows it follows by the, the daily stand up that I will actually meet and check 15 minutes to check on the progress of the team. And then while the teams is, are working, I, I'm actually having on and uh, frequent meetings with the product owner, checking how everything is moving, checking if there is transparency and if there is anything that needs to be done. So actually meeting with my team to make sure that they are actually not having any impediment that needs to be resolved. Then we do that and then we, that would go all the way every day to we meet we end, at the end of the spring, we do the review where we meet with the, 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 the stakeholders and the team you know, actually showcase with the, 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 the minimum viable product that is delivered. And then they will get their feedback and then the feedback will be implemented. Then we do our retrospective where we can learn from our mistakes and reflect and adapt that is a summary of how we do our my, my two weeks take runs. Thank you. Yeah. So who is your stakeholder right now? Actually, my stakeholder right now is the actually the representing by my management, the management actually, they are the one we have internal stakeholders as well as external stakeholders, internal ones that are my management top management team that are representing the stakeholders. Great. Okay, awesome. So talk to me about your relationship with the product owner. How is your relationship like with your product owner and uh, how have you dealt with the difficult product owner in the past? <clears throat> uh, thank you so much uh, for that question. Uh, you know, it's totally my relationship with my product owner is actually it, I can say it's a really good relationship because I use all my possible means to make sure that I build that good relationship with my product owner by of like getting trying to get to know know my my product owner very well, like not just focusing on work but trying to 
to ask some type of questions that he would, would, would open, like he would open up some certain thing that like he would get have some level of trust to me. And then that has actually built a relationship with me, with my product owner in such a way that we are actually like friends. Actually, we collaborate on day to day. We, we share information. Actually, we are just like friends. And the, the difficult challenge that I've actually faced with him was when I was just starting and actually you know, there was it was a time where we actually worked a tight schedule and the the the, the product owner he wanted to change like this he, to change the scope of this of the spring and he brought in a huge amount of stories that we were already in the middle of the spring and it was a kind of very difficult to implement those stories but I uh, I, I was a little bit afraid that it may affect the scope. And then what I did is that I didn't say no. I actually have a one-on-one -on -one with the product owner. And then I tried to listen to ask him and listen to where he's coming from, why we have to do this. I, I tried to listen to him. And then after listening to him, I discovered that it was actually a, a change that was coming from the customers that actually needed to implement that thing because it was of high priority to the to the spring. And we what, what we did was that it was a little bit difficult, but it was implemented. But we know I know that dealing with since agile itself is the ability to respond to change. So we actually adapt. We adapt to it and we are able, able to figure to get that done without actually having a really difficult. And my, my development team members actually they understood clearly because they are highly marked, they are very matured and high performing team and were able to, to implement that change. I think that is the only challenge that I face with my product owner and we were able to, to deal with it. Thank you. Yeah. One thing you mentioned is development team. How have you dealt with a difficult development team? Uh, this was a, a newly hired development, development team member who was not actually uh, showing up for was not actually having interest on agile because it was just coming from the waterfall. So actually what I did is that uh, I tried, I got one-on-one -on -one with this team member and discovered that he was not having interest to attend meetings and he was not actually aligning with other development team members there was kind of a little bit of slowdown because he was he was he was not seeing the, the value that Aja is bringing to the table. So I had this one on one with him, coach him, try to let him know see the value that Aja explain Aja to him, and little by little I tried to walk him through Aja from the from all the way from the differences between Aja and the, and the waterfall. And then walk him through all the way to the spring ceremonies, and then I was able to bring out the 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 mindset that agile mindset that was hidden in him, and from there he was able to get on board, and everything was moving away. Thank you. Great, great, fantastic. Now talk to me. Uh, you know, how did you deal with the situation where you were not able to meet your sprint goal in a sprint? Yeah, we in some once one of the spring that we actually did, it was it was we were not when I joined the team, the team was not actually meeting up with their spring goal before when I just joined. I can remember there was one spring when they were actually able to get at only 30, at they committed to 45 story points, but they were only able to deliver. 30, 30 story points. So that is the state that I made the team. And then 
what I did is I, I, I tried to, during a news retrospective, I used all the scrim ceremonies, I used all those events that I they happening and tried able to bring to them the value of Agile and try to retrospect them and try to coach them, mentor them, and try to change certain things like to introduce the story points instead of hourly exclamation and other method, other improvements that we're able to implement. And we actually were able now to start committing to the 45 story points and actually completing those 45 story points. So I think that because of all this transparency that were, was in the team, so that was not in the beginning, it actually helped us a lot to be able to meet in our targets and our deadlines. Thank you. Great, great, fantastic. Talk to me about your, uh, your backlog refinement session. So how do you manage your back? How do you make sure your backlog is healthy? Uh, the way I handle my backlog is like, we actu I actually have to I meet regularly. I meet before we do our spring planning. I meet with my product owner on ahead of time. Even we do, we do meet over the phone even ever before meeting on the the backlog refinement. So we actually do another refine pre-refinement on the phone to make sure that all the information is everything is online before we actually meet on the backlog refinement meeting. And during this backlog refinement meeting, we actually make sure that we clean the house, make sure that all the old stories that don't have any value, we get rid of them. And then we make everything to look like to look healthy, make sure that the backlog prioritize, split down stories, use the inverse criteria and make sure that all our stories are split down vertically. And then we, we that's how we do it. And we always keep it up to date and healthy. Yes, thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So how have you provided value to your team in the past? Uh, I'm actually using the scrum or the scrum ceremonies. I know Agile is actually the focusing on value, delivering value to the customer. That is the basic. So what I actually do to, to put this value is that I actually I show them that Agile is the value that Agile brings to the table. I do not by using the scrum ceremonies like during the spring planning, daily stand or spring review, spring retrospective, I try to bring that value to the table. By, for example, during spring planning meeting, I try to know to not actually doing the work, but facilitating that process that they will be able to, to, to know how to do this, the, 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 the story estimation, know how to do the, do the, the splitting down of the stories, I facilitated that, make sure that in certain uh, spring planning meetings, I even give it to them to make sure that they will be able to know how to do those things by themselves. And I use all like the daily stand up meeting, I use it in, in order to bring to listen to their in, the impediments that they have, using like in the dependency that they may be having. And at the end, I bring in. I ask if any member of the team is having any option, any, any solution to that. So I use this all the scrum ceremonies to, in order to improve the team, to, con to make sure the team continuously learn, continuously improve, continuously grow, continuously adapt, reflect and adapt on their mistakes, continually help each other, continually adapt to changes like in case of any change that is coming in, we, we adapt to it and then we move forward. That That is using all the opportunities that I have at hand to bring change, to bring to bring that, that agile, to make them to be agile, not only practicing in agile, but actually being agile by themselves. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. So what are some of the metrics that you use in your team to make sure your team is on track? Give me some of the metrics. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think we, we we use many metrics, but frequently, like mostly, what we actually use is the 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 the, uh, 
velocity metrics, like the velocity metric, like the burn up chart, or the burn down chart. We use the capacity utilization metrics. We use the commitment reliability metrics. We use the, the, the scope change metrics, defect leakage metrics. We use a lot of metrics, like different types of metrics in order the backdoor health, in order to track, measure the progress, see the stage at which the, the team is and see where we can improve, where it's not making well, and how we can continue to improve on our process. Awesome. That's amazing. All right. So talk to me about, um, you know, so you have done that, you have done that. Now, let's say, um, you know, so talk to me, what do you understand about, um, you know, improving the process? Let's say we put you in a team, the team doesn't have a healthy backlog, they, they don't have a good process. What will be your first 30 day plan? How will you start? How will you implement things? Actually, I think I will first to, to know if, if it's a team that is actually coming from the waterfall, uh, I will know that I have to 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 trans to 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 implement a, a way that I would transit them, like transit them from the waterfall to agile to make them to be to to have that mindset of agile. So in my leg, but if the team is already is already into agile already, and uh, the process, the way I'm good in my first 30 days, I'm going to start by actually observation, observing how they, they do their work, how they have been working. I give time for that observation. And then when observation is done, uh, while observing, I will be facilitating and actually observing, observing and observing. And then at the end, I will get to know, like get to know who is who among the team understand who is who, who is who, who is the hiring manager, who are the, the development team, get to know them in person, have one-on-one -on -one with them and get that understanding in place. And then I through that observation, when that all that is done, I'm going now to lay down my working agreement that I will be working with the team. So we actually lay down that agreement. When that is done, then I will begin. That will take that will almost be like 30 days from start like three to, to, to four weeks. Then I will start working, then trying to gradually lead them from the waterfall into agile by working them through, giving them the differences between agile and the waterfall. So explaining to them what is agile, like it's just a mindset, it's a way of working. And then it is actually breaks down the whole project development into springs, into iterations and deliver incrementally to the customer. And it has a time box frame, which is two weeks. And in some organization, they use four weeks cycle. And actually for, for the, for, for, the waterfall, which is like actually following a step-by-step -step process of uh, the project development that start with, <clears throat> with analysis, design, coding, testing, and then deployment. And before a stage is done, before a stage is done, the other one has to finish before the next step is done. So uh, after when I make them give them that understanding, then I will work down now to the Agile Manifesto work, they make sure that they understand the Agile Manifesto and then the, uh, the value that is bringing to the table. From there, I'll work them down to the Scrum Guide, make sure they understand the Scrum Guide, then understand the value that is bringing to the table. From there, I will work down to the Scrum Rules, explain to them the Scrum Rules, the Scrum Master and the functions and their values that they are bringing to the table. From there, I will go to the ceremonies, walk them through the ceremonies, and then bring out the value that each ceremony is bringing to the table. And then from there, I will be able to bring out the mindset, the agile mindset that is hidden in them. And then they will be able to start practicing agile. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Fantastic, God damn it, you're hired. Come on, God damn it, let's go. <laughs> That's fantastic. And let me stop recording. Hold on, hold on. Let me give you some.
So I think, I think Valentine, yeah, yeah, Valentine, I think you did fantastic today, man. I think you did fantastic. And I gave you five stars out of five stars. I think wow, you're, ready. Wow. you're ready. One of my favorite students. I'm so happy to hear that, Shatter. Actually, I couldn't have done this without you. Actually, what, what you have really done to put me on this level, I can't appreciate you enough. Like coming, knowing you has really put me on a level that I've never ex dreamed of reaching that level. You have coached me, mentored me, really trained me, like inspired me a lot, sent me, showed me a lot of good stuff and teach me. So I really appreciate, I can't appreciate you enough, Shatan. You are, you are the great. You are really, you have done it a lot for me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome, my brother. You're one of my favorite students. And, you know, I'm so proud of you, man. I think you got this, man. You got it and you, you, you're going to kill it, man. You're ready. You're ready, man. You're ready. <laughs> Shata, I really appreciate I'm just praying like I'm just praying that God should bless me with the job. And actually, yeah. I'm not gonna forget my mentor. I'm really gonna remember who put me at this level. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna like it, like, like, like make others to 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 know that there is someone out there who is called Shatan who can really who can really make you like turn your story around and put you on it on it on a ladder that you would never expect to be there. Thank you so much, Shatan. You're welcome, Thank you. my brother. You're welcome. I appreciate the kind words. Thank you so much.